The U.S. government is proposing a global ban on laptops in checked bags on commercial flights. The concerns are over the possibility of the devices catching fire in the cargo hold. Chris Van Cleve reports. The FAA has long been worried about the danger of lithium-ion batteries in the cargo hold of a plane, as this test video shows. But now, new tests found that potential danger could extend to even a single lithium-ion battery in a large device like a laptop. Turns out, if that kind of battery in a checked bag overheats next to an aerosol or nail polish remover or even rubbing alcohol, it can spark an uncontrollable, catastrophic fire that burns so hot some airliners couldn't put it out. In one test, an 8-ounce aerosol can of dry shampoo was strapped to an overheated laptop. It exploded in 40 seconds. A fire on board is, is the worst thing that possibly could happen to any aircraft. Ross Amer, CEO of Aero Consulting Experts, is a former airline captain. Having seen the devastation that these batteries could cause, I think every airline pilot is thinking about it and they would welcome this decision by FAA. Earlier this year, the U.S. and the U.K. temporarily banned large electronic devices from carry-on luggage on flights from 10 airports due to security concerns and the threat of a laptop bomb. The recommendation to ban laptops and checked bags went to the international group that acts as aviation's governing body. It's now considering that action. Large electronic devices will still be allowed as carry-ons. Brooks and Roxana. Chris, what more can you tell us about what nations and airlines would be affected by this proposed laptop ban if it is actually implemented? Well, if ICAO, the governing body, decides that they are going to move forward with this, th this would have international reach. Uh, it would be setting the policy, basically, um, at least the recommendation worldwide. Uh, and then I think once you see that recommendation made, the FAA, as well as the European equivalent, will move pretty quickly to, to put those bans into effect uh, for U.S. flights, likely domestic and international, as well as in Europe. And uh, the idea is that you want everybody to do it so you don't have a situation where it's okay to check a bag uh, when you're leaving some country and then you connect somewhere and you're connecting to the States and it gets on a U.S. airplane and they don't even know it's there. So um, this has the potential to be a, a worldwide ban uh, if the governing body decides to move in that direction. So quickly, so I understand right, this would be for domestic flights, we think, as well? It's likely that if you're going to say it represents a catastrophic danger potential on an international flight, that that danger doesn't go away just because you're flying within the United States. I mean, think about a flight from here on the East Coast to Hawaii is 10 hours. Yeah. That's longer than it takes for us to go to Europe. Uh, the double, danger right? doesn't change. Uh, yeah, of course. Okay, so... If this is such a danger, why in all the tens of thousands of flights that are happening, isn't there a case of this happening on a, on a passenger flight? Well, you know, so one of the reasons why you're seeing this uh, only start to be something that the FAA has looked at now is because the, the general consensus is people don't check their laptops. They carry them on the plane. Uh, and people only really started thinking about checking their electronics, like iPads or laptops, when the travel ban started to go into effect. And, and the U.S. and the U.K. told people they had to check these items. Uh, that's when the FAA went and looked at this and found that there is, there, there is some legitimate concern. Um, and, and you heard that rumbling during the, the laptop ban period um, about, well, what does this do? What about the risks about lithium-ion fires? Yeah. Uh, it turns out the FAA found in some circumstances uh, that there's legitimate legitimate concern here. You mentioned that uh, a lot of people carry their laptops onto airplanes in cabins. So is there supposed to be less of a concern of a fire hazard on the airplane in the cabin? Well so the idea here is if it's in a cargo hold in a checked bag, you're not going to know that there's a problem with that device until it's already reached a thermal runaway and, and you're, in, you're dealing with a fire. Because, uh, you know, the cargo holds are secured. There's no one down there. So you're only going to know there's a problem when the, when the smoke alarm or the fire system activates. Uh, and you don't really want that happening when you're at altitude. Uh, that's kind of your worst case scenario. If it's in the cabin, and just like if your phone started to overheat, you're going to know that your laptop's having a problem you're going to see that a lot faster, you can respond, and the flight crews are trained in what to do if there is a lithium-ion battery issue. Uh, and many aircraft have special devices they can put those, uh, those, those laptops or large electronic devices in uh, that'll contain a, a fire long enough to get the plane on the ground. So the thought is it is, in fact, uh, a lower-risk situation if the devices are in the cabin, because at least there you can respond to it. 
Okay, timeline here. The FAA makes this recommendation to the UN, but then got, the UN it doesn't have control of the sky, so it'll be by country or by region, and what timing do we think for this all to happen? So, I, at KO, the governing body is right now considering it. And if you, to make an analogy, right now we're at the stage sort of like a bill is in committee in Congress. Assuming it moves out of this committee, it's going to go um, to another committee and then to sort of the general assembly there. Uh, they'll make a recommendation. Uh, and then when, if, if they move towards uh, banning this, um, you know, that, that likely was probably a 12-month window um, where, where countries will have time to comply. Here in the U.S., uh, they'll need to change hazardous material standards. So that's the FAA and a second agency at DOT that would be involved with that. Um, but once once ICAO, ICAO sort of makes this decision, and if they say, yes, we're going to do this, um, it, it makes it much easier for the FAAs of the world to very quickly set a policy and start moving forward. Chris Van Cleve, thank you. Sure thing.